guys. Welcome back to another week of Mortgage Matters in Minutes. Again, I'm your host, Brett Rasmussen, owner of Mortgage Specialists. Today is a common question that happens not necessarily during a transaction, but many times before we write an offer on a property. And the question comes up generally from the borrower, buyer, and the seller. So what happens if the appraisal comes in lower than the price that we agree to, which is the sales price? What happens next? And the answer might not be as easy as you think. So today we're gonna chat about this and make sure that we get all perspectives because in real estate, Appraisals are done by appraisers, but it affects everyone, real estate agents, lenders, buyers, and sellers to make sure that a transaction gets through at the end of the day the way it's intended to, agreed upon at the beginning by a buyer and a seller that are both motivated to uh, a price and agree upon that price moving forward. So just because they agree upon that price doesn't necessarily mean that the house will appraise for that because an appraisal is based upon the houses, what we call comparables, in the same area, short time frames, very exact, if not similar types of homes. And there's a very structured system that the appraisers can use, but there's also some flexibility that they're able to use. So it becomes challenging when we have unique properties or we have properties that there's not a lot of sales in a certain neighborhood for appraisers to come up with a true value of the property. So let's talk about first why an appraisal is needed. It's really needed to cover the lender, not the borrower. Obviously, it is intended also to make sure the borrower can pay their loan, which covers the borrower and the lender. But the appraisal is needed for the lender's behalf to make sure that we know as lenders how much we're borrowing and to make sure that the value of the house is what you're paying for. So the appraisal is done by a neutral third party uh, appraiser that the lender is going to order through. Gone are the days of lenders having their own appraisers on staff. That's still talked about among some people that it's your appraiser. You know, you control the appraiser. We do not as lenders control the appraisers. They're independent contractors that are used in the market. And uh, any mortgage company, credit union, or bank does not uh, control or own that particular appraiser or have them employed, I guess I should say. So let's talk about this. Uh, first of all, why is it such an impactful situation? Well, everybody is moving forward assuming a certain number. When something changes in a transaction, it causes huge stress. So the stress comes from the buyer now not knowing what they can do, seller not knowing if the buyer can also make up the difference what the buyers and sellers both can do because now there's a different number on the table that was calculated before. So. We as mortgage lenders, the first thing that we do is we're gonna look at the purchase contract. And if there's something written in the purchase agreement that states, if the house does not appraise, this is to happen, we know what the answer is. I will tell you that's not standard language in a Nebraska purchase agreement. I don't love that answer as a mortgage lender, but I would love to share that at some point in time, I wish that language gets put into a purchase agreement that specifies what is to happen if a house does not appraise because it's really a financing contingency. Basically, the appraisal is needed for the financing piece of the puzzle. So it's not necessarily always uh, an issue that comes up, and I can tell you it happens very rarely. I would tell you less than 1% of the time that we've seen appraisal value issues happen. And out of those 1%, I would tell you 70% or more, the buyers, sellers, agents understand there might be an appraisal issue that's going to come up. So first we look to the contractor. There's nothing in the purchase contract stating what there is to do and the appraisal comes in lower than the sales price. Then what occurs? And then we have a few different options. The simplest option is the buyer can choose to make up the difference because when it comes to lending, we're gonna base the down payment off the lower of the appraisal or the price that you've agreed to, which is the sales price. So for example, let's say in this, a situation the house agreed to a price of 300,000. The buyer and seller have a signed contract, we order an appraisal, the value comes in at 290,000. The simplest answer is the buyer can come up with that additional $10,000 on top of their down payment, closing costs, and escrows. What happens if they don't have that, which a lot of times first time buyers don't. So if they can't come up with that particular gap out of pocket, which we've seen lots of people do during the pandemic, because at that point in time, rates were very low and people were willing to pay over a price just to get a property because rates were at 3% and they could afford a lot more with a lower interest rate. 
if they can't make up that difference, they can go to the seller and say, hey, let's meet in the middle. Or Mr. Seller, I'm only willing to pay what you uh, are, you know, what the house is appraised at, not what we agreed upon. So that can be an open negotiation. There's lots of legalities there that can happen. Some people say, well, the contract is null and void automatically. Not necessarily every situation is a little bit different in regards to what could transpire. The seller could be nice to give in, the buyer could be nice to give in, but many times that doesn't happen. A third option is for the real estate agents to get together and try to find additional comparables. Many times the appraiser might not have access to factual comps that have sold in the area. And what are comps? Similar like houses that have sold in the same area that are very similar in design, like, and feel. So hopefully the real estate agents might have access to some of those, but I will tell you most of the time when we run into these appraisal issues, that's the problem. We don't disagree the value might be worth it, we just can't support it by the facts and the rules of the appraisers, uh, rules that they have to abide by, which is meeting the lender's rules, okay? So we can provide comparables to the appraiser to see what is to happen. If that doesn't work, and the appraiser comes back and says, no, those comparables don't work, now we're up to the last possible scenario that could occur besides renegotiating with the buyer and the seller before canceling a contract is, having the lender look at the appraisal and looking and reviewing to see, did the appraiser really do anything incorrectly, completely inaccurately or not done in good faith? I will tell you that's not the case because appraisers have a license to withhold. They have to go through many years of training, schooling and responsiveness to compliance in regards to their entity, just like lenders do, just like real estate agents do. So when an appraiser turns in an appraisal report, they know the value is coming in less. They just can't support what the number is based on the facts that are out there. So every so often, great, great so often, we'll get the request that, can't we just order a second appraisal? And prior to 2009-10, you could do that. Now with the federal laws that are written, you cannot shop for appraisals. You have to use a valid, accurate appraisal if that is what is provided. So. Those are our possible steps and issues. If the house doesn't appraise, can the buyer make up the difference? Can the buyer and the seller meet somewhere in the middle? Can we get new comps to maybe get the value up? Or is it really a bad appraisal? I guess the last option would be if the borrower's putting down significant money, they can change the kind of financing. So they could possibly put less money down. They can move maybe from a conventional loan to an FHA loan. There might be a different situation there. The bar was also willing to maybe put more money towards the price of the home and less money towards the down payment just to qualify for the financing piece. Again, we are not attorneys. We're not real estate agents, nor are we appraisers, but we've seen these situations shake out and we get in the middle of it. We try to help guide everyone and educate everyone the best we can with the information that we have. I will tell you much of the time when these appraisals come in low, Everybody gets very defensive, mad, and the blame game comes out. What I can share with you is that never really works well. Um, blaming the appraiser saying they didn't do their job accurately is pretty much a false statement. I can tell you any time that I've been involved in an appraisal value issue, which has been very minimal in my 25 years, I would tell you less than 10 and over thousands of transactions, it first of all doesn't happen very often. When it does, there's a really valid situation of why the house didn't value properly. And most of the time, I'll tell you, the appraiser's not trying to make this a challenge or an issue. They want to make things work, but they can't according to the rules that they have to pass through. So if you're getting feedback that the appraiser just stinks and is not good and is bad, is a false sense of uh, information that you're receiving from anyone, friends, family, real estate agents, borrowers, uh, mortgage lenders, all the above, because we see thousands and thousands of appraisals. We know and understand what goes into them. We know and understand how to read them, and so do underwriters. If an uh, appraisal doesn't come in value, there's a specific reason. There's just not enough data to make that happen. So all parties need to work together to make this transaction go smoothly, which is you know, getting to the finish line for the borrower and the seller so they both feel like they got a fair shake at the transaction versus one party feeling they got taken or one party gave in too much. So if you are a real estate agent listening or an appraiser or anybody involved in the process, 
work to help educate everyone involved and stick with the facts. You know, a lot of motion goes through real estate and we understand that, but emotion is not going to get a loan done. Emotion is not going to get a real estate transaction done. Facts, data, information is going to get that real estate transaction done. And we here at Mortgage Specialists understand that and hopefully can guide you along the way if the situation does occur here with us. Again, I'm Brent Rasmussen, owner of Mortgage Specialists. Love to assist you with your financing or any questions that you have. We're just a phone call away at 402-991-5153 or check us out on our website at mtg-specialist.com. Have a great rest of your day. We'll see you next week. Mortgage Specialists. Driven. Trusted. Reliable.